sponsored in part by dollarseed.com for your flowers vegetables and herbs all organic seeds all only a dollar a pack dollarseed.com and by willsprings.soap.com handmade soaps with simple recognizable ingredients making soaps using the cold kettle process while using traditional methods willsprings.soap.com minority.com authentic haven brand 100% natural soil conditioner for the home garden all your vegetables herbs and flowers minority.com always free shipping squirman worm farm organic farm and gardening supplies it's conveniently located in plymouth wisconsin worm castings organic potting soil organic and heirloom seeds cover crop seeds and more squirmanwormfarm.com Welcome to Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. I'm Joy Barrett. Today we're in the garden and we're building a cold frame out of some lumber we had in the shed, but you could purchase the lumber from your local big box store, or hardware store, or our lumber yard. Now we're using 2x10s, non-treated, and they're kiln dry, and these were in, a, in the shed from projects days gone by. Now they were in a design, they were put together for a desk type of project, so we disassembled them, and you want to be sure of a couple of things. You want to make sure your ends are square. Now, if you buy these from your local home and garden center or a whole big box store, they'll typically cut these down to a size if you request it of whatever project you're working on. Now, even if you choose not to cut them down and you want to take them home and start fresh, you want to make sure the edges are square because not everything that comes from the mill is square. So you can use a square, you can use a ruler to try to eyeball and see if they're square or you can use a tape measure and measure the top side of the board and the bottom side of the board and to make sure that they fractionally they're as close to one another as possible and why is this important well it's because whenever you take your board and butt it up against the side of it here you want to make sure that it is as tight as possible because you don't want no cold air seeping into your cold frame or your hot box whatever you want to call it to uh, chill the plants that you're growing now if it if there is gappage you could potentially put silicone of some sort on the inside to seal all that up. so this is what it was now uh, we're disassembling it for a couple of reasons because we're going to take this 2x10 end and match it with that box there and I got a 2x6 here and I got a 2x10 here but we'll disassemble it and we'll, we've got these brackets so Virtually none of this is any expense, but the uh, six mil plastic that we're going to use. Now the top is going to be a screen from the house before the windows got replaced. Now this is a good size screen. We're going to make one of these boxes for the, bo the big garden here, and we'll have a couple of other boxes for the small garden. Now as you can see, this window frame or this screen is much larger than the box that we're going to make. So once we get the box constructed, we'll set this on top, figure out how much of a gap or how much board I have to cut out here. Then we'll bring the outside frame, screw it to, uh, to reattach it because we've got a good structure. Now. So let's get going and putting our cold frame together. So I'm going to put the end pieces here together. I'm going to take your the short end and set it inside. now. Um, I'm going to use the brackets here on the inside as a little more structure, but also I'm going to put, oh, probably, I'm going to put two three-inch screws on the outside, and based on how well that tightens it together will determine whether or not I use the metal brackets that were on these uh, projects before. So to do that, I'm going to lay my board here so I know... So I know how wide it needs to be, and I'm just going to take and mark, put an X there, and that way I know where I'm going to drill. I'm going to pre-drill these holes just to keep the wood, the chance of the wood splitting down to a minimum. So I'm going to start my screws before I put it vertical here, just so it's easier to put it all together. You want to do this on a as level surface as possible so you can get everything flush. So with using scrap lumber you have the uh, tendency of having pieces not always match up. 
So with the side that we've got attached here, it is one inch shorter than the piece that we're going to put on the other end. So I've marked my difference and we're going to cut it. Now this is where a square would come in real handy. I'm just going to use a makeshift straight edge and the saw that we found along the side of the road. Those always come in handy. And we're just going to cut this little portion off. Alright. Now let's see if it'll fit. I noticed that this board here is very, very twisted. So we're just going to have to work with it the best we can. That'll fit there. So I'll get this side attached first. Then we'll work on the board that is twisted and try to get everything squared up. Now just remember we're building a cold frame. We're not trying to build an addition onto the house. So if things are a little off, it's not that big of a deal. As long as you can get this as tight as possible and then if we have to we can fill in some of the cracks with silicone to keep the cold air out. So we've got our frame put together. We've got our window screen frame on top of it. And like I said, it's a little larger than what we're going to need. So we're going to cut it down. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, why don't you just make the box big enough for the frame? Well, we didn't have that amount of lumber. Now when we go to the small garden to make those, we'll buy fresh lumber and we'll be able to cut it to the shape of our screen. But since we don't have that size lumber, we're going to figure out where we need to be at, which is about center of this board. Then I'm going to cut it down here, and I want to cut it here. And then I'm going to screw these two together and the same thing up there. You'll understand when we get it all, all put together here. Now the reason we're doing this is one, because we want to have fresh produce throughout the winter. And a great reference that we have is Nikki Jabor's year -round, the year-round vegetable gardener. Now she does gardening in the summer. She's from Nova Scotia, Canada, by the way. And she also does this cold frame growing in the winter. And if she can do it in Nova Scotia, I think we'll have no problem doing it here in Southeast Wisconsin. Some of the things that we're going to be growing in our cold frames will be leafy greens, lettuce, spinach. We're going to try to grow carrots, beets, uh, some onions, and uh, experiment with some other cold hardy or hardy cold uh, plants like you would grow in early spring or late fall that can tolerate some of the colder temperatures. So that's the plan. We're going to see what we can do. It's going to be a whole lot of fun being able to harvest fresh produce in a cold climate during the winter without having an actual big size greenhouse. So let me get this cut down, marked and cut down, and we'll put it all together. There are many different styles of cold frames that you can construct for your own backyard. The flat top like we are creating we feel works best for us. You can also purchase cold frames online as well. You can construct your own as it has a slanting degree of top towards the south facing sun as well. Again this is all personal preference and what you feel will work best in your backyard. Alright so we got our window screen frame cut down obviously in a project like this is a lot of trial and error but we had to cut quite a considerable amount off to get it down to the size with the wood that we had available now we're going to put hinges on the back and a latch on the front this is going to be the front so i'm going to put hinges on the back now these hinges i don't know if we found them or they were already well i don't know where we got them from but they're going to work real well i'm going to put I think I might be able to get away with just one hinge because you know again we're not building a house we're just trying to build something that's gonna grow food so let me uh, get this put together and then we're gonna latch on the front as well so I took the screens off because in the process of cutting it down the screens uh, got mangled so We'll dispose of them in recycling form. Now when we do it with the other ones and be able to make it to the size of the screen frame, we won't have a problem. Now with the hinges, I'm going to put one on the center of the back. Now typically I'd want to do a hinge like that. But because the hinge is not big enough, it would only cover that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just render it a little bit. And all I'm wanting to do is have a hinge to where you can open the front up and then also close the front without the back sliding all over the place and also uh, attach it to, you know, so it's nice and firm. 
So we'll just screw them in and then we'll put the latch on the front. All right, we've got the back on there. We got one hinge, which is fine for what we're intending to do with it. I'm just putting this latch on the front and this is a good thing for if you have a lot of critters in, the, in your area. Now, I'm not saying raccoons are gonna come up, stand on the back paws, open it up and have a buffet, but it just keeps everything tight, closed, keeps it locked down for when it's windy, for when it's cold, and just to keep everything, the heat in the best possible. So I'm just gonna put, I got the bracket there, I'm gonna put this in, and then all the thing we have to do after this is we'll have to purchase some plastic, some clean, clear plastic, probably six mil plastic, and we'll drape over the top of it. And we might even put a piece underneath and we'll staple it down. And the reason why I'm thinking about doing two layers, one on top, one on bottom, is to have that air in between, that insulation, to keep it even warmer. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is on these really warm days prior to, you know, snow on the ground, you want to be able to open this up and allow that heat to come out because otherwise you're going to roast your plants. So we want to put some kind of... Uh, block here to where we can actually prop it open. We'll do that before we get done here. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is put our block or our latch here so we can elevate the frame on the really warm days before it gets too cold. And I just took a piece of scrap lumber and cut it. So whenever we can just open it up on the really warm days and let that air come out of there, that hot air with plastic over top of it on the, and at night, we'll just close it back down and we'll be good to go. So it's just that easy, we'll get the plastic on there and come this fall, we'll bring you out in the garden when we get this thing set up. Now with this project, it cost us zero dollars. Now that will be added, uh, there'll be a few dollars expense for the plastic that we'll use for to cover this, but also that plastic will also be used for the other cold frames we'll make for the small garden. This was a little more labor, labor intensive than what I anticipated with having to cut down the screen frame. Obviously, if we had the correct length of lumber, it would have gone much quicker because we just matched up with the frame of the screen that we had here. But nevertheless, it works well. It'll produce food throughout the cold season. And that really is the ultimate goal. A little extra work now for fresh vegetables when it's cold outside. We're in the strawberry patch. Now, obviously, the strawberries here have already done, bloomed, and buried. But they are giving us the opportunity to expand the strawberry patch here as well as take plants to the sister-in-law's backyard up against the garage like we had spoke about on a previous episode. And we are going to do that by daughter plants. Daughter plants is what the main mother plant gives off each year and it's basically free plants. So you don't have to go and order them or buy them from your local home and garden center. If you've got strawberries, you've got daughter plants and you can have a multitude of plants throughout the years and it will continue to self-sustain itself. So what am I talking about for those who may not know what daughter plants are? Well, a main plant, let's say for this, this one for instance, a main plant here, that's your mother plant. Now coming off that mother plant, are daughter plants. Let's see if I can find one. I don't, eh, here's one coming off. Oh, somewhere back in here. Okay, that's a daughter plant. What it's doing, it comes off the main, and here's one I accidentally tore off. It comes off the main mother plant. This, basically, it's an umbilical cord for the from the mother plant, and it can produce five, four to seven daughter runners, or daughter plants, now what happens is that these strawberries will begin to root themselves at, in the nearest soil. Now you can see there's some roots there and they'll continue to go throughout the summer months putting on and extending their train of daughter plants. Now obviously this has been snapped off and we cannot use it. But if you come over here, we can take a look at what some of them that I haven't ripped off, what, what we're going to do with them. Now, here. That's a daughter plant there. That's fine one. Okay, here we go. This is a daughter plant that's connected to the mother plant here. Now, I don't want to cut the umbilical cord yet. What I do want to do 
And you can do this a couple of different ways. One, you could actually take uh, a cup or a pot, dig a hole, put some good soil in it, and allow that plant to root. Now what I'm going to do, which is a little easier than doing that, is I'm going to take metal hanger, wire snips. I'm going to cut little horseshoes. And I'm going to take wherever a daughter plant is, and I'm going to very gently push that horseshoe next to the, the daughter plant. And in about four to six weeks, that plant will establish roots enough to where I can cut the, the main or the umbilical cord, let's call it. And then I can dig this up, put in some soil, take it over to the sister-in-law's house, and we can establish a strawberry patch for her this fall that will bear fruit next year. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through a couple, uh, you know, a dozen or so of these plants, as well as we'll be starting seeds from some of the strawberries that got overripe out of this patch. And we'll start from some from seed as well. Maybe a little bit of a challenge, but it's obviously the way nature allows you to be sustainable by allowing the plant to put on more plants or daughter plants to continue the patch for years to come. I'm just going to take, put that horseshoe. I don't want to push it too, I don't want to make it too tight because I don't want to cut off the, the circulation there from the mother plant or the nutrition. Now this will, uh, what I'm going to do is that's one daughter plant. What I'm going to do here, here's another runner, but I'm going to take and cut that off. So all the nutrition and all the focus is on this daughter plant to establish roots. Now I've got these white hangers, or they're, they're white, so I can come back and I can review the video as well if need be to know where I've pinched these down to where I can extract them out. So it's a great way to get more strawberry plants out of your patch, whether to extend the patch or to take the plant somewhere else. And strawberry patches are usually good for about three to five years. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and comment. We put out this video each and every Tuesday with a variety of other videos throughout the week. I'm Joy Barrett and this has been a Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. For more information, you can visit the website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. Thank you.